I started writing this in 2002 because they had rediscovered Vertigo, Hitchcock's Vertigo, and I started looking at re-looking at his movies. I was always a big fan, the craftsmanship, the big entertainment of it, the suspense, the twist. And I thought, I'd love to do a movie in that style. They were the first movies that ever inspired me to even think about filmmaking. So I started thinking about which great titles he had, Vertigo, Spellbound, Psycho. Um, I thought, which, what name like that, like a one title name hadn't he done that would be it? And then right then the name Hypnotic came into my head. And I thought, Hypnotic, that's a great title, but what does it mean? And then within like 10 minutes, I came up with the basics of the story. Someone who's super uncatchable, a villain that you could meet them and you forget you even met them. They take your bank account, they take anything they want from you, walk away, and you don't even know you met them. So I thought that would be the ultimate person. And uh, started crafting the script from there. I came up with a lot of the set pieces that are in the film, the final film, sticked since 2002. The script evolved over time, but a lot of the main set pieces and hooks where the audience never knows what's real is what's fun about a movie like this. What's fun about it is almost like one of those wrong man movies of the Hitchcock genre, which I did even in the mariachi. It's just a great way to introduce an audience to something new. So Ben Affleck plays Rourke. He's a detective who's hot on the trail of this character named Del Rain, played by Bill Fitchner, that is uh, pulling off these elaborate bank heist but getting away clean so he brings in Diane Cruz who, who knows about hypnotics in this underworld world of hypnotics but now they are a target because not only does Del, is, is work after Del Rain but Del Rain has something that work found in the bank heist which is a picture of his own daughter with a clue on it his missing daughter so there's an emotional connection work trying to find his missing daughter he thinks Del Rain is the secret and and it's a chase it's a, it's a mutual chase through the end one thing that always elevated Hitchcock's movies was his casting. He always had people like Cary Grant, you know, or Jimmy Stewart, or Grace Kelly, uh, Ingrid Bergman, and really wanted to cast this up and get real superstars. And Ben Affleck plays Rourke and brings that sort of Hitchcock mystique to this role. He is the father looking for his daughter. He is the relentless cop. And he's got such star quality and presence that I really felt like I was filming a Hitchcock film. Like I, like I got one of those classic movie stars. He's of the right age and just came in lean, mean, and ready to rock. And he is awesome. He's really fun in this role. Alicia Braga is just someone I've worked with before. Just love her. She just brings so much heart and dimension to a role, intelligence, and a mystique to her because she does possess these hypnotic powers. When she explains it to you, and there's a lot of explaining she has to do, not only to work, but to the audience, you believe everything she says because she's so good at making it feel very real and genuine and heartfelt. And that's what these movies need is that extra dimension uh, of the human heart, and she brings it. And Bill Fickner, I mean, William Fickner, I could not imagine someone better to play this character. I needed someone with a gravitas that you know right away he's the villain. He's the guy you're going after, yet he has an intelligence and layers to him that only get unveiled layer, later. And uh, he's got this hypnotic quality to him. You put the camera front and center and have him look almost right into camera and he hypnotizes you. He is so great at this and he really had fun getting to go with it and he just floats through each scene like it's like it's nothing yeah i'm working in austin texas again in my own troublemaker studios and i'm always using that as a selling point studios come film here it's one-stop shopping and it definitely is in this movie we didn't have to go anywhere there's very few days that were on locations most everything was shot every nook and cranny of this place from the elevators to the offices to behind the back lot to this back lot itself which is leftover set of alita uh, doubling for Mexico and we get to use it in ways I can't even reveal that I've always wanted to use and it is phenomenal it is really something that saved us tens of millions of dollars because we're utilizing everything that's around here and it gives it the big scope epic scope that a Hitchcock type film deserves I used to compose the score for my films as well but my son Rebel uh, took the job for me he's just so good the last film we did we can be heroes he wrote circles around me i just had to let him do the whole movie and he's already been writing uh music while we were in pre-production while we were shooting so here we're finished shooting i already got a main several main pieces of the score before i've even really started editing 
and that's what's really great about having your kids there. My other son, Racer, is my uh, producer, and he's been doing on day, every day here, doing rewrites with me because locations change, actors change, situations change. We come up with better ideas, how to really hone in on what the movie's becoming. And uh, my 17-year-old did uh, previs animatics with his game engine that really helped us drive, know what to shoot for the special effects as far as plates because it gave everyone an idea of, of all the awesome imagery we were going to be adding later. And uh, he created all that in his game engine for me, and it was just stellar. Uh, that was one of the main things I was excited about, was we were making a movie for the big screen, you know, with a release pattern that was going to be designed for theatrical. And for being something that would draw repeat business, you want to make a movie that will have people come to the theater again and again because it surprises them and they want to bring others and it's a communal experience because the surprises and the shocks come fast and furious. So it's a real audience picture, like a Hitchcock film, even if you see it at a revival theater, plays amazing to an audience even today. And I wanted this to have that. So seeing it on the big screen, the imagery is huge. That's why I shot it 235. It was my first widescreen movie. I'd never really done a film widescreen. This is the first one. I really wanted to feel big. Hypnotic has always been my favorite story, original story, since I started writing it. It just captured my imagination, fueled tons of ideas. You could create a whole series, you know, of movies or TV series with this kind of concept. It's a big concept because it, it does what we're trying to do as filmmakers. You know, you bring an audience into a dark room and you try to hypnotize them. You try to make them believe that what they're seeing is absolutely real, at least real enough to become emotionally invested. You're creating a hypnotic construct around them using images, sound, uh, music, to make them feel and believe a certain way. And that's what the film is about. That's what happens to the characters, and they can't tell what's real and what's not after a while. And that constant playing with the characters is what we do as filmmakers with the audience. And it, you see the relationship really well and it's why we love movies it's why we love you know visual storytelling and this takes that and goes all the way with it and slams on the gas ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys <laughs> hey you guys hey that's what they all say hey you guys hey you guys